I'm here with Mark Nelson of Rio Grande, and we're going to be working with something really interesting today. It's makumegane. Makumegane. Tell us exactly what that is. What it is, it's an, an old Japanese alloy. Mm -hmm. And what it, in this case, um, we're using 21 layers of copper sheet and silver sheet and alternating layers that's mm -hmm. been fused together. Okay. And on the very back is um, a sheet of argentium silver. So okay. that the copper, if you're wearing a bracelet, Mm -hmm. won't interact with your skin. That's a great point, because so. I know that's sometimes a concern for some people working with copper. Right. Yeah. Now, what I like is that when you turn it back around again, what's interesting is the pattern that you see on there. Right. What is that exactly? That's the pattern of the alternating layers, and mukumagane means uh, wood eye metal. And as you can see, the, the small lines kind of give a wood grain pattern wow. with the eyes of the metal kind of looking like it's little... really interesting. Wood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when it's patinaed, uh, the, the copper really stands out. Absolutely. It gives an extra detail in, in texture. Right. Now, is it hard to work with or pretty easy? It's very easy to work with. You work with it just like you would normal metal. Okay. So. I'm excited. Yes. And for this project, um, I wanted to cut it in a disc. Mm -hmm. And one of the easiest ways to do that and the quickest ways to do that is with a disc cutter. Okay. Okay. Do you first measure it out? I see you have a nice little You do. Circular. What you want to do is kind of pick the size that you want. Mm-hmm. And these, uh, there's punches for different sizes. And I want about a seventh and an eighth, uh, mm -hmm. seven eighths of an inch, and I want to make sure that that fits. Okay. Okay. So now what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and uh, draw my circle in there with an ink pen. Okay. Now you're actually working on copper right now. Though. Right. I want to practice first. Okay. Uh, Mukumagane is pretty expensive material. Okay. So, so you don't want to mess it up. You don't want to mess <laughs> it up. And once I have my circle, I'm going to find the um, appropriate hole for it. That's an interesting. Piece and this of is actually right a clamp. Okay. I want to clamp my metal down. Okay. So I'm going to spin this until it gets nice and tight. Mm hmm And this lifts up and pulls out of the way. Like that. Perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now what you want to do is you want to take your punch, and the punches have a slight bevel on them, mm -hmm. so it's going to kind of shear the circle. And you always want to have wood underneath. If you do this on uh, metal or concrete, you're going to damage your dies. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, also, what you want is a very heavy brass hammer or a hammer that has a soft mm -hmm. head. Right. If it's hard, it's mm -hmm. going to damage the dies and damage the tools. Right. And you want to try and do this in one shot. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and if you do it right, you should push all the way through. Wow. And you're left with a perfect disc every time. That was interesting. Yeah. And and just to clarify once again, you know, you want to practice with, co with copper before you get this. I mean, this is actually, you know, not overly expensive where you know it's going to be really hard to you know prohibitive no but definitely you know mm -hmm. if you're spending money on anything that's so pretty you want to at least practice on the the, the little thing first exactly <laughs> you want to try it yeah oh yeah okay, okay. let's put this over near you okay and go ahead and slip that in so you slip this right in here mm -hmm. this is fun and you just twist it and yeah, just, just crank oh, it all the way down see. put this all the way down yeah you're good okay there and go. there's your punch so which side? To the bezel side? That's right. You want to make sure yeah. that that side goes down. Okay. All right. And there's your hammer. Stay clear. <laughs> you hold it. Uh-huh. Really hard. Again. Again. There you go. Yay. And then it goes all the way through. Oh, that's magic. Love Very that. Very quick. Every circle is going to be identical, at least the same. Now, do you have to file it down or anything like that You do, afterwards? because the edges or? is going to have a burr. And okay. it's going to be very sharp. And to do that... Um, all you need to do is take a file. Mm -hmm. You want to start with a file because it's going to have a pretty good burr on there. Mm -hmm. Take a couple of passes all the way around. Mm -hmm. And finish up with some sandpaper, like around a 400 grit. Uh -huh. And make it nice and round. Perfect. Okay, here's the thing. Since we've practiced on the copper, mm -hmm. now it's time to do the real thing. The real thing. Huh? <laughs> okay. I'm ready for it. So I noticed that you put the um, wood grain side down, do you, just because it's easier to, to mark the circle on exactly. the silver portion? Exactly. I can portion? actually see the circle okay. on the silver part. But it doesn't have to be one way or the other. It doesn't. Okay. Now this is a little bit thicker material mm -hmm. than the copper, so it's going to take a little more force. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like the fact that, you know, doing it this way, that it's definitely, like you said, it's a perfect match every time, especially for earrings and things like that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. I'm glad that it took you two times. <laughs> like I said, it's thicker material. <laughs> and if you can feel it, it's pretty sharp. Yeah. Right there. Oh, yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Wouldn't so want earrings like that without filing no, exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs>
or anything worn next to the skin. So take a couple of passes with a file mm -hmm. just to knock it down and then follow up with some sandpaper. Perfect. And then we have a disc. Okay. Okay, so now we were talking in the beginning, we showed you this one that had the patina on it. And these are the ones we just, that one we just cut out. Right. How do you get the patina onto it? How do you get the patina? Mm -hmm. um, do first of what you want to do, or? you want to prep it. Okay. And what we're going to do is dip it in a little bit of water. Okay. And this is a prep. Okay. And just sprinkle it on. It's kind of it's um, like a powder. Yeah, it's kind of soapy, mm -hmm. uh, but it has a little pumice in it. Mm -hmm. So um, it has a little bit of grit. A little bit of grit, a little mm -hmm. bit of abrasiveness, and that'll help the patina take. So you dip it in the water after too. Mm -hmm. You want to rinse that all off. Okay. And then dry it off. Okay. And once it's dried, now this is a special patina developed really for mukume. Um, what it does is it oxidizes the copper, but not the silver. Oh, since there's both elements in there. Right. If we take that and kind of move it around, and let it, see how that copper is just popping out? It just out? popped, like a picture. Yeah. It's and incredible. now we can take it and wipe it off and rinse it. Now look at that. Look how gorgeous wow. that is. So actually what's a good thing is if you put it down next to some of the other pieces. You can see the Look difference. Look at the difference. And that was pretty instantaneous. Yes, this patina works very quickly mm -hmm. and it takes very little to do. I was going to say, so it doesn't matter how much you put on, you just, you only need a little bit like what you just did, a couple right. drops. Right, a couple of drops is going to last a long time. Obviously, depending on the size of the And the, the nice piece. thing about this is that everyone is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So there's a wide range of things um, happening and going on. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, you know, it. it it's wood grain, but it does have a little bit of a different... Uh, you know what? I got to tell you, this one almost has a little bit of an animal print thing to it. A little animal print. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, so you, you can use it for so many different things. Now, once you get it down like that, what's the next step? Would be well, the next thing is you can, you can shape them however you like it. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to dome them or dap them, make them domed. Um, you can drill them and you put, make them into earrings no. just by adding an ear wire. A simple drill a hole, add some ear wires on there, and they're, and they're complete. Mm -hmm. And next to it is a pendant done with this uh, disc cutter, and um, they're hung so that they can um, be suspended from there. I want to show the back of this because I found this really, really interesting. Look at the reverse portion yeah. of this. I use head pins for that. Wow. I love head pins because you can use them for all kinds of different things. Wow. So you know what also, too, because to be honest with you, t in my opinion, it's kind of a reversible. Because I would wear yeah. it like that, too. Yeah. Because that's a really cool design, and then it's a completely different look. With the next pendant, we've done all circles so far, mm -hmm. but you can do some other different things as well, right? Right. It's okay. not just cutting discs. And you have earrings there that with washers mm -hmm. that you can definitely cut out very quickly. And the bracelet there is the little crosses mm -hmm. where I cut those out of a sheet in an oval shape and then use the disc cutter to cut the detail. Now, I want to go back to this necklace, the one that's next to the hanging mm -hmm. one, for a quick second. Um, it has a little bit of a, a hammered finish to it. Right. So what did you do with that one? I took uh, dapping tools, which are punches with uh, round balls on the end, and formed it. And then with a hammer, went back in and hammered finish it. That's really pretty. So. Let me turn it around and see the reverse portion of it. Too. It has a very faceted kind of reflective quality. Look at that. Now... How did you do the shape of it? Did you use the disc cutter just to cut out certain portions of it, or did you do it free form? Or no, I used a disc cutter. Wow. Yeah. So it does look like it's kind of half circles. Exactly. And <laughs> you, you quarter circles, half circles. Um, the disc cutter is a very, very uh, versatile tool. Perfect. This is really interesting. I love being able to work with a new medium. Yeah, so me we're too. talking about taking our, our jewelry making to the next level. This is definitely it. Yeah, you're good at cutting discs. <laughs> Give me that hammer. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mark. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll be right back.